so in my previous video of making an induction heater my lids were burned down because of excessive heat so today i went to the hardware store and got this uh, copper pipe so to make the inner part of the coil i just used this uh, rolling pin and after that was done i put this uh, 3d printed shell on the inner part of the coil and just wrap the rest of the pipe around it and I think it looks pretty half decent. I'm using these wooden sticks to keep the inner part and the outer part uh, separate. I wanted to use uh, more turns because uh, it would increase the inductance and I would be able to use even lower frequency. So it also fits uh, pretty nicely my crucible. So. And the inductance uh, should be around uh, I think six micro Henry's. So six point seven, six point six. So six, six and a half micro Henry's. And it should perform significantly better than using a solid uh, copper conductor because at the higher frequencies most of the power is scattered by the surface of the conductor so if your conductor is uh, very thick it doesn't really help so the power will be carried by the inner surface of the copper conductor and the outer surface of this uh, copper conductor or copper pipe so it should perform better So I have increased the inductance of the work coil from 3.5 micro Henry's to 6.5 micro Henry's. Also I have increased the value of the shunt capacitor to 6 microfarads from 3.3 microfarads. And this is what the waveform looks like at 3 volts. And before it was running at uh, 34 kilohertz and now you can see it's at uh, 24 kilohertz and now they should even pull more current through the power supply because the frequency is even lower and it's gonna penetrate deep into the metal so should pull more current and if you want to know how i built this whole setup and how i tuned it you can go and check out my first part of this uh, series uh, making an induction heater so this is the new setup as you can see i went a little overboard with the shunt capacitors i used a lot of small values and connected them in parallel uh, so the current capacity is now 7.3 microfarads and i also added this uh, capacitor bank it's the capacity is around 1500 microfarads so the positive goes here to the positive and it's i've connected it before the choke coil the negative just goes to the negative I'm going to test uh, the iron nails first and if everything goes well we'll test the aluminum foil also and the current working frequency for iron nails is uh, around 20 kilohertz so just a moment all right so I have also added uh, some ice water in here in a small container to keep the heat sink cool because the heat sink was getting quite hot I have also removed my oscilloscope probes. The frequency I'm gonna use is 20 kilohertz. So let's start. So 8.3 amps at uh, 20 volts.
right so officially it's been running for over 15 minutes now and uh, it might not be melting because the loss of heat is too much to the environment uh, you can see they are red hot then there are quite a lot of nails inside it So it works, but uh, I have to do something about loss of heat. All right, so we're gonna test aluminum now. I'll be using 27 volts. Just gonna turn on the signal, turn on the power supply. Okay. Alright, so it's been more than 30 minutes. Let's just call it a day. Check it. Uh, it is red hot. I should have, as you can see, the wires are getting quite oxidized here here and here i definitely should have soldered this but uh, other than that it's good it's been running for over 30 minutes nothing went uh, terribly wrong and i'll see you next time